There we go. Let me get some audio here. Okay. Wow. Nothing like some last minute technical difficulties to make you sweat. Uh, thank you, everybody, for hanging in there. Look at my get my hair in check here. Holy smokes. Uh, thank you for your patience. Um, it's great to see you at another Session Wire Live. My name is Brandon Lyons. I'm going to be taking everybody through Reaper alongside Session Wire, um, which, you know, I think uh, Reaper is a, a vastly underrated DAW. Um, if I wasn't kind of already a staunch um, Pro Tools user, uh, I would be looking at Reaper pretty seriously. There's some really cool functionality that we can check out here um, that, you know, plays nicely with Session Wire uh, in terms of routing. Um, if you're uh, if you're just joining the stream, please put a comment. Comment where you're from and your name. Say hello. Uh, I love to see people, you know, popping into the comment stream. Ask questions. This is what this stream is all about. Um, if you, you know, throw a question in the comment thread, I will try to answer it live on the stream here, so you'll get your answer straight away. Um, also, please go to www.sessionwire.com and sign up for your free Sessionwire account. And if you, at that time, you know, decide that you want to use Sessionwire, send us an email, support at sessionwire.com, and I'll send you a coupon for 20% off the first year of your annual subscription right away today. So that, kind of, that deal is going to end at 11.59 p.m. PST today, March 31st, 2022. So comment in the thread where you're from, where you're watching from. Last week I had somebody watching the stream on a train in Europe somewhere, which was really cool. Um, I, I just, you know, I love seeing where people are uh, tuning in from. So without further ado, because we're already behind here, again, uh, I apology, uh, apologize for the delay, last minute technical issues with the streaming platform. Um, yeah, what can I say? I'm sweating. Uh, here we go. We're going to jump into Session Wire. Oops, I'm going to go here. There we go. Try that one. There we go. Um, we are looking at the Session Wire app here. This uh, is the centerpiece of the Session Wire ecosystem at the moment. Um, it's an application that runs alongside any DAW that you choose to use. Um, we offer VST3 audio units and AAX plugins that you can use uh, to bridge your DAW with the application. So any DAW on Windows or Mac, you can use Session Wire alongside it to collaborate with anybody in the world. Um, just a couple of settings we're going to go over really quick. It's very simple. The application behaves very much like any video communication software that you're used to. There are three streams instead of two. You know, a typical video communication app is an audio stream that you use to speak to somebody with and a video stream that runs simultaneously alongside it. We have a third audio stream that is stereo and is completely unprocessed. It transmits at an equivalent 48K 32-bit floating. So whatever you put into it ends up coming out the other side exactly as you hear it locally or as you want somebody else to hear it if you set up a, a custom kind of mix, which we will check out in Reaper in a second. Uh, hello to uh, LV. I hope it's pronounced LV uh, from Florida. I'm assuming FL is Florida. Nice to see you. I hope the weather is nice down there. Um, it's a, kind of a balmy five degrees Celsius here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. The snow is melting. It's awesome. Springtime is around the corner. Um, here is the Session Wire app. We're going to mouse over the left-hand side of the screen. I'm not in an active call at the moment, so my local video on the left-hand side is what I see, along with my contact list on the right-hand side. I'm going to make sure that my talkback stream which is located here under this little microphone icon is set appropriately and session wire defaults to your system's default input and output devices just like it would for anything like zoom or google meets uh, my microphone i've selected as my audio interface and i have a microphone plugged into channel one of that audio interface so session wire picks it up and i can see my talk back meter moving which means that i'm successfully getting signal into session wire and i set up the speaker as my audio interface as well so if somebody's speaking at me or to me through the session wire app i'm hearing it coming out of my audio interface there's no need to use our session wire talkback plugins at all unless you absolutely need to and in that you know that case might be that you don't have one of these 
It's just a USB webcam. If you don't have one of these with a microphone in it, you might need to route your talk back in and out of your DAW. Uh, if you are using a Pro Tools HDX system, you might have to use the TalkBack plugins to route TalkBack in and out of the HDX system. You might um, have an artist in a vocal booth that you want to set up the TalkBack going to them through your DAW. Uh, you might use the, the TalkBack plugins for that as well. Um, hello to Steven from Orlando and uh, Gabriel. I assume it's pronounced Gabriel from Santa Cruz, Bolivia. That's a new one. Nice to see you. That's uh, This is really cool. Uh, so we're just talking about the TalkBack stream and how it's really similar to any video communication software. I've got it set to my audio interface with my microphone plugged into channel one as the microphone, and the speaker is set to my audio interface. So I can uh, speak to somebody and hear them directly through my audio interface. No need to set up any DAW. I don't have a, a DAW open at the moment. Um, pretty straightforward. I should mention that I can call somebody right now on a free plan and talk to them face-to-face -face through TalkBack and video. I don't need to be paid. They don't need to be signed up uh, to a subscription to do that. So you can begin communicating directly with them immediately. And as soon as you need the other features, like the high-quality audio stream, the TalkBack auto mute, the file transfer system, you can go and upgrade to the artist features, either via subscription or our ses session passes, and immediately those features will turn on in that call, and away you go. You can start working with your DAW. Hello to Josh from Nashville. Uh, good to see you. Um, so yeah, just checking uh, checking my other machine here, which I'm uh, using for demonstration purposes. Um, if we go back to the uh, the app here, there's a button beside the TalkBack button that is where you will set your camera. So I have a CamLink. Uh, Elgato CamLink 4K HDMI capture card that I'm using with my camera. Uh, I could just as well use, you know, my uh, Logitech webcam right here. Looks pretty good. It's got a built-in microphone that I can use for talkback. Um, you can use uh, OBS virtual camera if you want to do some camera mixing. You can use a Blackmagic ATEM um, capture card if you choose, um, whatever you'd like for video, just like video communication software you're used to. Uh, the next button over is a screen sharing feature, so you can pick a screen or pick an application to share in the SessionWire app. Um, again, similar to any video communication software you're used to. And then this little orange squiggle, the SessionWire logo button, this is the high quality audio stream settings. So usually, let me just change this, usually, SessionWire will default like this. The HQ audio source for the SessionWire app on my computer is set to the SessionWire send plugin. So I can place the send plugin on my master fader and I'll automatically be streaming audio to SessionWire. I don't have to change anything in the SessionWire app. Put the send plugin somewhere and it's streaming my audio to the SessionWire app. The HQ audio destination of the uh, SessionWire app on my machine is my audio interface. So if somebody were to stream music to me, it will go straight to my audio interface and I'll be able to hear it without having to touch anything. I don't even need to have a DAW open to be able to hear the audio being streamed to me from the remote side of a session wire call. So this is great for mix reviews with clients. At the moment, uh, everybody has to sign up and download session wire in order to you know, connect on a call. We have a major update coming in the next few weeks that will change that completely. You'll be able to send a link to your client and they can join by a web browser without having to sign up or download or anything. Um, but for now, they have to download, sign up, have the app, and they just have to open the app. They don't have to open a DAW in order to do things like mix reviews or you know approvals on um, compositions or films or whatever you choose to use SessionWire for. So uh, pretty straightforward. Um, on the right-hand side of the app here, we got the connection list. I'm going to give Dan Smith a call. He's my uh, computer over here that I'm using for this demonstration. So I've already connected with Dan. If I wanted to, you know, find him and send him a connection request, I can search for Dan Smith, uh, and it'll show up with his profile. I've already connected with him. It would say send connection request here. If I wasn't, it would send him a connection request. He would have to accept or decline it, and then you're in each other's connections list. So I'm going to call Dan. Dan's going to answer. And here we are in an active session wire call. Um, if I hover over the remote side of the app now, there is a set of buttons that appear 
that have to do with controlling the call. There's a couple of placeholder buttons for features that are upcoming, uh, like a chat feature that's coming soon. Um, we have nonverbal communication icons, uh, emojis, essentially, if you don't feel like um, ruining a take by you know, going, oh, you know, that was a great take, you can just send them a thumbs up instead. Um, this button right here is very, very neat. This is the session view link generator. I can click this button while in an active call. It creates a URL that I can send to anybody and they can join this session via web browser. So I'm adding a third or fourth or fifth, et cetera, person once in an active session wire call with somebody else. Um, they can join the session from their phone in Google Chrome on the subway, check out the session, hear what's happening. They can see us, we can see them. They can hear us talking, we can hear them, and they can hear the DAW audio from the host's machine. So, you know, if I'm tracking here and uh, want to uh, tie somebody in and, you know, have them hear what's happening in my studio, send them a link. They can join the call. And uh, it, it's quite slick. And again, we're going through some really major updates in the next little while that will change how all of that works. So stay tuned for details around that. Um, the other, you know, couple buttons here, this is an audio uh, refresh, an IO refresh button. If you find that you're not getting signal in your uh, meters, even though you have everything selected correctly, especially on Macs, Apple Core Audio has a tendency to kind of disconnect drivers and do strange things when you open and close different sessions. So you can just hit this button and it'll reselect and reconnect all of the drivers that you've already selected. Um, some network diagnostics here. Uh, ooh, look at that. My audio, HQ audio round trip time between my main machine and my computer over here is one millisecond. Extremely low because I'm on a local network tied in by Ethernet, which is important. Uh, talk back round trip time, very low as well. Video jitter, very low as well. Uh, if you find that you know your video is choppy or the, the audio is choppy and you're getting some errors pop up in the top of the app, have a look at this. Have a look at your round trip times. Um, it'll kind of give you an idea as to the health of your network connection. Uh, we do recommend Ethernet over Wi-Fi for very obvious reasons. Ethernet is much more stable in terms of connection um, uh, robustness, if you will. Um, so make sure your Ethernet with Wi-Fi turned off if you can be. We're working with professional audio. You don't want Wi-Fi connectivity causing dropouts in your audio. Um, Next button over, notifications. So uh, any kind of calls that come in, any connection requests will show up here. And the next button over, there's some settings in here that we'll get into, including turning the meters on and off, um, video quality, screen share frame rate, mirroring the local video, um, CPU meter on in the toolbar, and our talkback auto mute feature, which we'll check out again in a second. So uh, I'm going to pull up Reaper here, and we're going to dive right in. Here's Reaper. I'm going to make sure that Session Wire stays on top here. Okay, so I've got a Reaper session here. I've got some drums uh, thanks to Telefunken. Um, they have a bunch of multi tracks that you can pull in. This is the quickest thing at my disposal today. If I play this session, you're not going to hear anything, and we're not going to see any signal show up in Session Wire because there are no plugins in this session yet. So I'll hit play. See all the meters bouncing like a normal session. Fantastic. Okay. I'm going to go to my master fader. And at the end of my effects chain, if I had an effects chain, I am going to insert the session wire send plugin. So session wire send. Did I spell it wrong? Oh, because I'm looking in VST. Very important. It's VST3 or audio units, not VST or VST2. VST3. So I usually pick the VST3 plugin. I'm going to add the session wire send plugin at the end of my master uh, fader effects chain. I have no other effects. And now we should see signal show up here in the send plugin and in the HQ audio meter in the session wire app. Fantastic. We see signal there, which means that I'm sending audio through session wire successfully. And as long as the other person on the other side of the call has their session set up appropriately, they'll be able to hear that audio, no problem. Okay, anybody has any questions, please put them in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer them live right now. Um, also, you know, if you haven't signed up for your free SessionWire account, go to www.sessionwire.com, sign up, 
download the app, have a look, let us know what you think. Um, getting back to Reaper here, if you didn't notice, as soon as I hit play, my talkback muted. This little red, this little M, the mute button, went red because I have, let's see here, I have talkback auto mute on, on my local microphone. So if I hit play again, Great. It's muting my local talkback, which means I could be listening to this mix on my monitors really loud. And as soon as I hit play, it's going to mute my microphone and all the client will hear is my DAW audio. Um, important to note that you have to have one of our plugins in your DAW. So I have the send plugin in, which sends the trigger to the Session Wire app to mute talkback. Pretty slick, though. Um, that's it. I'm streaming audio across Session Wire. It's as simple as that, really. Um, when we start looking at bringing audio from Session Wire into our DAW, that's when things get a little bit interesting and we have to think about our workflow a little bit more. So I'm going to play, uh, I'm going to have Dan over here play some music and we're going to see the HQ audio meters on his side of the Session Wire call move. And I'm going to hear it come out of my headphones and I think you should be able to hear it on the stream as well. Give me a thumbs up in the comments if you hear the audio coming from Dan in a second. Um, but we won't see any meters show up in Reaper yet because I'm not bringing that audio into Reaper at the moment. I'm only sending it straight to my audio interface, which my headphones are plugged into. So here's a little bit of something. <clears throat> of course, more technical difficulties, the... Uh, audio player I'm using is having a fit. One second. <clears throat> Just one of those days. Anybody's having one of those days, throw in the comments. Here we go. See the meters moving. Fantastic. So he's streaming audio to me from his side of the call. I see his meters moving and I hear the audio because... My HQ audio destination in the SessionWire app is set to my audio interface. That audio is coming straight out of the SessionWire app, going straight to my audio interface, and I can hear it. Uh, LV, yeah, it happens. No worries. Doing great. Awesome. Thanks. Um, if anybody's just joining, please comment where you're from, what your name is. Great to see everybody in here. Technical issues always go better with coffee. You're right, and I don't have any coffee. That's a big problem. Uh, I should have grabbed one before. I'm too busy trying to sort these issues out. Um, great. I'm hearing the audio coming from Dan. Fantastic. We're going to bring that into Reaper now. And this is where some of the Reaper routing kind of functionality is really, it's exciting to me. It's, it's very slick. Uh, so I'm going to create an audio track here. I'm going to name it Session Wire Receive. Uh, I think you can also change the color tracks as well, uh, or track color, I should say. I always set the track color to like a session wire orange if it has anything to do with session wire. So uh, this is where I'm going to put the session wire receive plugin. So backtrack a little bit here, find the session wire receive plugin, put it on here. And I have to go into the session wire app and change the HQ audio destination from my audio interface to the session wire receive plugin. Boom. Now, if Dan plays his audio, we'll see it show up in his HQ audio meter here in the receive plugin and on this channel strip. And there's going to be a problem. So as soon as you hear it, comment what the problem is in the comment section. Here we go. Okay, so comments, what's the problem? I hope you can hear it. I think I have everything set up so you can hear what the problem will be. 
Aha, uh -huh. Stefan, Stefan. Yes, Montreal. Delay. Steven says delay. Yes. Here's the problem. Dan's sending me my audio. It's coming into the Session Wire app here. It's going to the Receive plugin here. It's going to the channel here. And then it's going to the Master Fader, which has the Session Wire Send plugin on it. And it's going back to the Send plugin and back through my channel back to Dan. So Dan will hear his local audio and me bouncing that audio right back to him. That's not good. So in Reaper, we're going to go into the little route menu here. And I'm going to turn off Master Send. Turn that off. And I'm going to create a hardware output that's going to go straight out my output one and two on my audio interface. It's going to bypass this master fader. So now I can hear the audio in Reaper, and it's not touching the master fader. Here we go. Oh, are we hearing distortion? Was it just that one time that I played it, or was it all of the time? So if I play it now, it shouldn't be distorted. It shouldn't be overloading anything. Awesome. So that should have been clean that time. And I can also trim it back here on the receive plugin if it's hitting my DAW too hard. Um, same thing with the send plugin. If it's hitting session wire too hard, uh, you can trim it back here. Though if you have an effects chain with a limiter at the end, you should be okay. Uh, Stefan says nice, or Steven, sorry, Steven says nice. Uh, good. So that should have been clean. And now I'm seeing signal show up here in Reaper. Fine. Which means I'm successfully bringing it into reaper soft clipping yeah exactly yeah awesome so uh there we go depending on you know the audio that's being broadcast i think this uh shout out to my friend nathan who mixed this i think he did a very good job it's uh it's pretty rocking it's pretty compressed it's pretty you know pretty in your face so that's likely what you're hearing is the mix the way it is so shout out to nathan um now is the more, uh, oh, my mic is clipping. Well, that's interesting. That could be, uh, oh, you know what I bet that is? That's the processing in OBS. I hope that that's, you're able to deal with that. Um, I hope so. It's just to get it a little bit louder and uh, like broadcast level. Um, now's the most exciting part about Reaper for me. Reaper, as far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, is the only DAW that you can record the audio coming from a plugin on the same track that that plugin is on, if that makes any sense. Most other DAWs, in fact, all, like all other DAWs, as far as I'm aware, you put the plugin on a track and you have to route it to another track to record it. This one, you just have to change one setting. So we're going to go and we're going to right click on the record button, the record arm button. We're going to change record output and we're going to choose stereo. So it's recording the output of this channel on the, at the same channel. Pretty slick. So I'm going to hit record in Reaper. Oh, no tracks were select. Okay, because I got to arm the track. There we go. Hit record in Reaper. And I get my Reaper shortcuts going on here. Come on now. Oh, man. Yes, I'm really showing off my prowess in Reaper here. Move these over just so we can see what's happening. There we go. So we're seeing the timeline move. I'm going to hit, Dan's going to hit play, and it's going to come into Reaper, and it's going to record on this track. Excellent. I'm going to go save all. It's going to save that clip. And normally what I would do is I would just create another, you know, another track. I would name it audio one or guitar one or whatever. And I would take this clip and drag it onto that track. So this session wire receive track is always where the recording is happening. And I just take those takes, drag them onto appropriate tracks. It's kind of like a ADR kind of workflow. You know, you have incoming audio. You're just dragging it onto different tracks as it comes into your session, different takes, that kind of thing. 
Uh, Steven asks, uh, we work in film and do a lot of remote dialogue recordings in various parts of the world. Some places may not have great internet bandwidth. How does it handle buffer issues in record? So interesting thing about SessionWire, this call that I'm on with Dan Smith, which is my other computer, is a peer-to-peer -peer connection. There's no buffer between us. There's no server between us. It's strictly machine to machine. So it's about as low latency as you can get. However, it does put us at the mercy of the, the, the strength of the network connection between us. So we want, uh, you know, you want as stable a connection as possible. Uh, one of the workflows that we often recommend if there's unstable internet is that the recording be done on the performing side of the call and you use a remote desktop control software to control the client's machine while you're monitoring through session wire that way audio dropouts due to network issues don't they're not a, a they're not a factor you're recording everything clean on the local computer and then you send the session to yourself after the fact um, i hope that kind of answers your question Stephen. if not um ask away um is there latency compensation in the plugin latency compensation in terms of local latency or latency over the internet what what are we uh what are we asking about i mean i'm, I'm i can answer both of those questions i suppose um there's no real latency correction needed because all the plugins are doing is taking the incoming audio from the session wire app straight into the daw there's no um there's no latency there it's you know it's really quick so all the latency comes from um, the network connection, the time it takes for the signal to get from A to B, and in some cases back from B to A, and local buffer size. So if you have a low buffer size, then you'll have low latency. Um, do you have access to control the recording machine remotely? Uh, there's, it's not built into our app yet. However, we are going to be building remote control into the app. We also offer a service uh, alongside SessionWire that allows you to control your client's machine. It's very slick for an added fee on top of the subscription. It's kind of a one-on-one -on -one setup that we're doing at the moment. So if you're interested in that, shoot us an email, support at sessionwire.com. Um, LV asks, uh, in terms of timing, in terms of a timing in a session, so latency in terms of a timing in a session. So I think what you're asking about is dealing with the latency in the network through the plugins. So if I was recording somebody remotely, dealing with the time it takes to get from A to B and B to A, there's no compensating for that at the moment. Um, we have a feature coming that will help with that. At the end of the day, it's physics. It takes time for the signal to go from my computer away to somebody else. They'll hear that audio and perform along with it just like they're hearing in real, in real time, right? Performing. I'll bring their performance back into my DAW their performance is going to be behind my audio, my local audio, by however long it takes for my signal to get to them and back again. There's just nothing we can do about that. It's physics. And even if there was no latency in the network, adding switches and network infrastructure and all that kind of thing, speed of light is only so fast. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Again, if not, please reiterate. Uh, more than happy to... Uh, to kind of elaborate on that a little bit more. Um, so there we are. We're set up in Reaper to broadcast audio away and bring it back. Um, ooh, is there a discount for bulk purchases, subscriptions, and for nonprofit ministries? Yes, I'm sure we can work something out. Um, please send us an email, support at sessionwire.com, or go to the website and hit, uh, hit up our contact form. Be more than happy to talk about bulk purchases or you know support for for nonprofits or educational institutes um yeah we'll connect you with the right person for that uh okay we're going to look at bringing talkback audio in and out of reaper i want to reiterate this isn't necessary in fact we highly recommend not doing it unless you have to so right now my talkback audio is being routed directly in and out of the session wire app through my interface i have my audio interface selected as my microphone with my microphone plugged into channel one makes sense the application is picking up that signal i'm seeing it show up here the talkback stream is mono it's got echo suppression and noise cancellation on it it's just like any other video communication software except i think our 
our noise cancellation and processing is quite a bit better than any other. Just saying. Uh, the speaker is set to my audio interface, so I can hear whoever's speaking to me through the SessionWire app straight through my audio interface. No need to set up anything. I can even like not have a DAW open and call somebody and talk with them. It's awesome. But in the case that you don't have a microphone plugged into channel 1, it's plugged into channel 19, I think, which we'll see in a second, something like that, and you want to route the incoming talkback audio to a custom headphone mix that you've set up in Reaper or any DAW, this is how you can go about doing that. I'm going to create a new track. I'm going to call it Session Wire Talkback Send. And just like I did before, I like to set the color to Session Wire Orange. I'm going to insert the Session Wire Talkback Send plugin on this track. I'm going to set the input of this track. Sorry, I have to go over here. Set the, whoop, I'm going to mute that. Set the input of this track to whichever channel the microphone is plugged into. I'm going to choose 19. I'm also going to go into the routing here. I'm going to turn off the master send on this track. So it's not going to send this audio to my master fader, which is good. I don't want to send the talkback audio through the talkback plugin and through the HQ audio stream. I'm also going to right click here and I have to remember how this works. I'm going to disable record. It's going to be input monitor only, I think. Monitoring. Let's see how I have to remember how this works. Apologies for all you Reaper users who actually know. There we go. Okay, perfect. So it's not going to record anything if I hit record because I've disabled recording, but it's still monitoring input 19 and I can see that signal show up here <clears throat> in the talkback send plugin and now in the session wire app I'm going to change the microphone to session wire talkback send plugin and I'll still see that signal show up here albeit a little bit delayed and we're going to look at that in a second that has to do with the buffer size that I'm using in Reaper most likely if I'm to hazard a guess I forgot to change the buffer size so it's lower but now I'm talking through Reaper so if I needed to route my talkback audio to a custom headphone mix that I have set up, I would, you know, hit the uh, routing button here, create a new send. Uh, oh, sorry, create a hardware output, I think. You know what? Now I'm forgetting how Reaper works. I would have to create another channel for that headphone mix, send that audio to that, and the output of that channel would be the headphone mix that I'm sending it to. So there's a few ways to do this. Either way, my talkback is now showing up in Reaper and I can do whatever I want with it in Reaper, route it to headphone mixes, do some processing. I put you know, a couple of plugins before the session wire talkback, send a plugin if I wanted to compress and EQ the talkback a little bit, put a gate on it for whatever reason, you can do that. I'm also going to bring the incoming talkback audio into Reaper. So I'm going to create another audio track, session wire, talkback, receive. <coughs> and again, change the track color to session wire orange. And I'm going to insert the talkback receive plugin here and go into here and change the speaker of the session wire app to session wire, talkback, receive plugin. <clears throat> and I'm also, <laughs> one more thing, going to disable the master send and send the audio straight out my hardware output one and two so that I hear that talkback audio straight out my output one and two, not through the master fader. And if I unmute Dan over here, I should, I should be, be able, able to see, see that, that audio, audio show, show up, up in, in Reaper, Reaper, and you should be able to hear that. that. It sounds like, like a bad, bad MacBook, MacBook Pro, Pro microphone. microphone. And now, and now I can, I can route, route this, this incoming, incoming audio, audio to, to custom, custom headphone mixes that I may have built for clients. So <clears throat> now all of the talkback audio and the HQ audio is being routed in and out of Reaper, mostly using this fancy uh, routing that Reaper has, disabling master send on the track and creating hardware outputs to avoid sending audio to the master fader when needed. <coughs> Pardon me. 
Uh, this little track wiring thing is very cool. If you're one of those people that likes, uh, you know, visually seeing your routing, you can open this up, have a look at where everything is being routed to. We're looking at the session wire receive plugin. It's not being routed to the master fader as all of these other drum tracks are. So same with the session wire talkback send and talkback receive channels that are not being routed to the master fader. So there you have it. That is Reaper in a nutshell alongside session wire. Um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll hang around for a few more minutes here. If anybody has questions, please put them in the comment section. Uh, Stefan says, uh, I have one come from online gaming. They use server to sync people. Yeah, it, it's an option. So uh, Stefan's asking um, if we can use a server to sync people. We can do that. The tough thing with trying to do something that like that with music is that uh, you know, uh, <laughs> ooh, I'm not touching that one, Stephen. Sorry. Um, is uh, it, it, humans are kind of finely tuned to hear fine differences in timing. Um, I think you'll find when you're on a Zoom call or you're playing a game, it doesn't feel like there's any latency there. You know, you're speaking to somebody, they're speaking right back. It feels pretty, pretty quick. But as soon as there's a reference, a reference beat. Humans have a hard time kind of playing together, <clears throat> at least, you know, if you're any kind of um, seasoned musician or you've been playing uh, an instrument for a while or in a band, anything past 15, 20 milliseconds starts to be really uncomfortable to play along with somebody. Um, and you'll find that any network connection starts to approach that round trip time pretty quick. So when you're playing a video game, you know, 10 milliseconds, 15 milliseconds, it's not it's really not noticeable when you're playing a video game. When you're working with audio over networks, that's a pretty big amount of latency to deal with when you're trying to um, sync audio across a network. So uh, think about it this way too. You know, The only way to sync audio is by pushing back everybody's audio that they're hearing by the, the, uh, the amount of time that the... Uh, person with the largest amount of latency is hearing it that's the only way to do it so the person that is playing right to the metronome will end up hearing the audio come back to them uh, delayed as much as the last person that's playing along with it in that chain of latency if you know what i mean so there's really no way around it um, in terms of trying to make real-time jamming over the internet work or tracking a band live when they're all in different places around the world, the only way to do that is to broadcast a click out to all of them and not have them listen to each other at all and bring all that audio back into the session, which kind of defeats the purpose of rehearsing or, you know, tracking live. Uh, so I hope that answered the question, bit of a long winded answer. Um, there's a, a really good article in our support site, support.sessionwire.com. It's called Latency Versus the Speed of Light, <clears throat> written by our founder, Robin LeBeau, that kind of explains the whole uh, latency thing and uh, gives some really good examples of different amounts of latency and what it sounds like in a musical context from, you know, a slight slap echo to a larger slap echo to a delay, that kind of thing. Um, give you a good idea of what happens when we add latency just due to the network. That's it. Um, I think this is a good place to end off today. Uh, I try to keep these as short as possible, 30 minutes, <clears throat> 40 minutes tops. Um, if anybody has any further questions, I'll be checking out the comment section for the next little bit. You can put your comment in there. More than happy to answer. You can reach out to us at support at sessionwire.com with questions. Go to our support site, support.sessionwire.com. Also, if you haven't yet, go to www.sessionwire.com. Sign up for your free SessionWire account. Uh, for the rest of today until 11.59 p.m., shoot us an email. Say you were watching the web stream, and I'll send you a coupon for 20% off your first year of your annual subscription if you decide to upgrade to the artist-level features, which unlock the HQ audio stream, <clears throat> the auto-mute function, and our drag-and-drop file transfer system, which I should demonstrate really quick. Let me pull up my finder. You'll have to go into your finder and find some find the files, the audio files that you're looking to transfer. 
uh, let's find my desktop here. So I have this folder. If I wanted to transfer this folder or something inside of it, let's say this screenshot, I would just drag the screenshot onto the other person and away it goes. <clears throat> and they're prompted for a save location and they can save it wherever they want and bring that file into their session. So there you have it. Session wire in a nutshell alongside Reaper. Um, I hope that uh, everybody got something out of this presentation. There's another one coming next week. Let me check my schedule. I believe next week is going to be Cubase and Nuendo. Uh, so if you're a Cubase user, please drop by. It's the same kind of thing. I'll be going through Session Wire and its use alongside Cubase. And if you have questions, please bring them along. Otherwise, uh, have a fantastic week and uh, hopefully see you next Wednesday. Okay, take care. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>